All right, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, today, you will hear from San Francisco District 2 Supervisor Catherine Stephanie regarding her new bill banning the possession and sales of ghost gun kits and parts, the first such complete ban in California. Joining us today to share remarks on the importance of this bill and on addressing ghost guns and is San Francisco Police Department Chief Bill Scott, United Players founder Rudy Corpus, Brady California President Maddie Scott, gun violence survivor Mia Tretta, Brady San Francisco leadership team member Ruth Borenstein, and Giffords Law Center Senior Counsel Allison Anderman. After speakers have concluded their remarks, I will open up for questions. So with that, Supervisor Stephanie, if you would like to speak. Thank you, Liam. Today, I am extremely proud and grateful to stand with these incredible advocates from all across the gun violence prevention community to announce new legislation banning the sale of possession of unserialized ghost gun kits in San Francisco. Currently, state law permits vendors to sell disassembled ghost gun kits without a serial number, requiring the purchaser to obtain a serial number from the Department of Justice within 10 days of assembly. You can imagine that rarely happens. When people purchase unserialized ghost gun kits, this means they don't go through a background check, nor are they subject to waiting periods. There are no sales records or age restrictions at the time of sale. This massive loophole has allowed ghost guns to become the weapon of choice among those who are otherwise prohibited from obtaining a firearm. In San Francisco, ghost gun seizure increased over 2,700% from 2016 to 2020. And this increase has continued into 2021. Ghost gun seizures were up 350% in January and February of this year over the same period two years ago. Ghost guns were less than 1% of all gun seizures in San Francisco in 2016. But by 2020, they were 16% of all firearms seized in San Francisco. Just last week, San Francisco Police Department's Community Violence Reduction Team arrested an individual on parole who had a ghost gun with a high capacity magazine in his possession. And ghost guns are not just a problem in San Francisco, not only in San Francisco, the California Bureau of Firearms seized 512% more ghost guns in 2019 than in 2018. The ATF recently reported that 30% of crime guns recovered in California were ghost guns. In January of 2020, the ATF's Los Angeles Field Division reported that over 40% of its cases involved ghost guns. This is an absolute crisis, and I urge localities across California to pass similar le legislation. Every community needs a ghost gun ban because every community is threatened by ghost guns. Tragically, the rise in ghost guns has accompanied here in San Francisco a rise in gun violence. Overall, shootings were up 62% in 2020 compared to 2019. And in the fourth quarter of 2020, shootings were up over 220%. According to the San Francisco Police Department, that tragic trend has continued into 2021. They reported that shootings are up now over 300% as compared to the same period last year. Gun violence is not just some abstract social harm. Gun violence needless, needlessly destroys the lives of families across the country every single day and it's traumatizing our nation. As President Biden has recently said, it is an international embarrassment. We all deserve to live in a country free of gun violence and I will not give up until that is our reality. I'm grateful to present this legislation the same week that President Biden has asked the ATF to develop new regulations around ghost guns at the federal level as well. For too long, gun violence has wreaked havoc in our communities because politicians lacking a spine and putting themselves before the good of the country have sold themselves to the gun lobby. We need every elected official at every level of government to show the same commitment to ending gun violence in the United States. Those of us who've been working in this field for a while know that we do not do this work alone. 
I want to thank the organizations who power the gun violence prevention movement and who have helped make this ordinance possible. Brady United Against Gun Violence, the Giffords Law Center, Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America, and United Players. In particular, I want to thank Maddie Scott with Brady, Rudy Corpus Jr. with United Players, Celeste Perone with Moms Demand Action, and Allison Anderman for their leadership and exceptional advocacy. These are the people who are in our community each and every day, working tirelessly to address the root causes of gun violence and to put a stop to the everyday carnage in our country. You are going to hear from an incredible gun violence survivor later in this press conference, and I want to thank her in advance for her bravery and advocacy. Thank you, Mia, for being here and for sharing your story with us. I am just in awe of your poise, maturity, and your incredible resolve. No child should ever endure the kind of experience you have had to face. I also want to thank our amazing police chief, Chief Scott at the San Francisco Police Department for joining us today and for being a true leader on gun violence prevention in our community. Finally, I want to thank the amazing Ruth Borenstein who has worked with me over the last six months to draft this ordinance. We would not be here today without her brilliant legal mind and her relentless advocacy. Thank you, Ruth, for all you've done and for all you continue to do. And I wanna thank everyone here for joining us today. Together, we will keep going and we will see this ban on unserialized ghost gun kits through here in San Francisco. And as we say, as goes San Francisco, so goes California and so goes the rest of the nation. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Supervisor Stephanie. Chief Scott, if you would like to unmute and speak now. Thank you, Liam. And first of all, thank you, Stu Supervisor Stephanie, for your amazing leadership on this very important issue for our city and leadership for our region and our country. As we all probably saw over the news yesterday, over this past weekend, there were over 420, let me repeat that, 420 shootings across the country in which people either were seriously injured or killed. Nine of those were considered mass shootings and a definition of mass shootings are shootings in which six or more people are shot. We have a problem. We have a problem in our country and we have a problem in our city with the proliferation of handguns on the streets. And though that problem is causing the loss of life and the senseless injuries and destruction of families, both in our city and in our country. Please, please hear me clearly. In San Francisco, we had 75 people shot in 2020 or 2021 versus 22 people this time last year. As Supervisor Stephanie just illustrated, we are significantly increased in our shooting victims this year. This legislation will help lead the way to get this under control. Unserialized firearms, also known as privately manufactured firearms, also known as ghost guns, have exploded in our city in the last few years. In 2020, 44% of the guns recovered in homicides were ghost guns. That number is up from only 6% of those same type of guns in 2019. That's a percentage increase of 38%. Again, we're talking about human lives here that are impacted and we're talking about families, many of which you will hear from in this press conference. I'd like to say just a couple more things regarding ghost guns. You know, laws are in, in place so we can regulate within the second amendment who gets a firearm in their hands. Legal restrictions such as people with mental illness, people who have committed acts of domestic violence, people who have been convicted of certain felonies, they are, they are prohibited from owning firearms. When people make and manufacture their own firearms and they sell them to whoever they wanna sell them to, these regulations mean nothing. And in my opinion, this is causing part of what we're seeing on our streets play out. It's really important that you understand this legislation and its intents and that you support it. And again, I'd like to thank Supervisor Stephanie and everyone on this call, including United Players, founder Rudy Corpus, 
Maddie Scott, who has done so much work to curb gun violence in our city. Mia, who you'll hear from shortly. The Giffords Law Center and their counsel, Allison Anderman, and many, many others who are working very hard and rolling their sleeves up to put us in a better place and reduce gun-related deaths in our city. So thank you again for allowing me to be a part of this important work. And with that, um, I will pass the microphone back to Liam. Thank you, Chief Scott. Rudy, if you would like to unmute, unmute and speak now. Sure, so uh, peace and blessings, everybody. Thank you, Supervisor Catherine and Stephanie for your leadership and always advocating to ban and get rid of guns. Um, everybody else on here. Um, I'm a survivor and I've been on both sides of the guns. I understand the seriousness and totality of gun violence, period. I'm not against the Second Amendment, but I am against senseless gun violence, any violence, period. But having these ghost guns out here on the streets is a whole different level of gun violence. You hear all the statistics that have already been said. There's been a lot of other shootings that are probably not even reported. You imagine having ghost guns in the hands of criminals now who can just get these guns without serial numbers on it? And you wonder why all these gun, all these shootings that are happening all over the country. I was watching the news last night and they was talking about the shootings that happened just in the Bay Area alone. I know for a fact that most of those guns that are being used are ghost guns. You hear about it on the streets. As somebody who was always on the front line, my boots to the ground, 10 toes to the floor, I hear what happens on the streets. People are speaking about these ghost guns. And guess what? They're circulating out here on the streets. You don't want to wait till somebody you know or somebody you love that gets killed for you to say, guess what? I should have got involved. It's your opportunity right now to stand up and speak up against this. Because this right here is a whole different level. You, uh, 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 Chief Scott spoke about it already, about people who are registered to try to get guns, right? People, certain people can't get them. But these guns right here could get in the hands of anybody. So you imagine that, that these guns unmarked, untraceable, without no serial number, with the hands of a lot of people out here who's already going through a lot of struggle. So we have to get this banned. We have to shut it down and do our best. And like, like the great Maddie Scott says, it's all of us or none of us that is real. And so I wanna say thank you for having me on here to help support on banning these ghost guns or any guns that's gonna harm or hurt our people in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy. Maddie, if you would like to unmute and speak now. Good morning and everybody. Um, and ditto Rudy, definitely um, to Catherine Stefani. Thank you so much for putting this out here and for always being on the front line and you Chief Scott for your support. And uh, Rudy, all of us, Ruth Bornstein, our uh, Brady leader, um, whose brilliant mind just really has helped us do so much great work um, at the Kyle Palace getting, you know, stopping the gun shows and things like that. I just appreciate everyone, Allison and Mia, all of us, we are in this together. We're in this together. Today, all the work we have done, it will not go in vain. It will not, it will not. These ghost guns that are on the street now, it's a serious matter because I don't want any mother or any grandmother. Yesterday was Mother's Day, okay? It was difficult for a lot of mothers because they lost their children to senseless gun violence. I don't want any mother to have to experience what I experienced 25 years ago, losing my youngest son, George C. Scott. 24 years old, I lost him, father of two, my two youngest uh, grandsons. I don't want any mother to experience that. And as I always say, I want to go to graduations and funerals. Instead of, instead of funerals, I want to go to graduations. That's what I want to do. And now, all the work we have done here in California, 
all the work we are doing across this nation with Brady, Mothers in Charge, uh, my organization, Healing for Our Families in Our Nation, it will not go in vain. We will not stop. This will end. We will end this ghost gun epidemic that's in our nation right now, because now it's an epidemic. As you heard Chief Scott talk about the statistics and Supervisor Stefani, this is real. I want to reach every mother, every father, the PTA, suicide prevention. Everybody needs to be uh, on this page with us when, they talk, when we're talking about ghost guns, because now anybody, as Rudy said, can get a gun. Anybody online, your child, children are always on the computer. I think about my nieces and nephews. What are they doing on the computer? My mind is there, you know, because now they can order a gun off online without you even knowing it. You know, so this is really dangerous. It's really serious. Um, you know, and as, uh, you know, Rudy has stated, all the guns we've get off the street doing um, the gun buybacks. We've been so successful here in San Francisco with Chief Scott, with all of our leaders here in San Francisco. San Francisco has set the stage. And so I applaud you, uh, Supervisor Stefani, Ruth Boren, Senior United Players, and our chief and everybody that's on this call because we are doing the work, but our work will not be in vain. We will get this message. We will get this bill passed in San Francisco. If we have to take the lead, we will get it passed across our nation. Philadelphia is suffering. Philadelphia is already almost two, 265 homicides already. Chicago, my God. Can you imagine ghost guns in Chicago? People are already hurting and suffering. We don't really have taken the lead on getting this bill on ghost guns put to be uh, put on the books here in San Francisco, we are gonna pass it and then we're gonna move it across this nation. We're gonna move it across the whole nation because as I said, this is about all of us to none of us. I wanna to go to graduations and not funerals. And we have the power to do it. We have the power to do it. And our president, our president and Vice President Kamala Harris already set the stage saying that this is a problem and they're gonna address it. So we have the powers that be in the right position. We're in the right position. This is about all of us and none of us. We will stop the killing and start the healing. We will get ghost guns banned in San Francisco and in our nation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maddie. Mia, if you would like to unmute and speak now. Good morning, everyone. And thank you all for having me here today. As Liam said, my name is Mia Chetta. I'm 16 years old and November 14th of last year started as a normal day. I rushed out the door and my grandma dropped me off at Saugus High School. I was a 15 year old freshman and at the time just three months into the school year. I walked into school and into our quad, including my friend group, hundreds of other, st other kids stood hanging out before class. All of a sudden, as I was laughing with my friends, there was a bang. Another bang came and I was suddenly on the ground. Everyone fled the quad except me and my best friend, Dominic. I told him that we need to run and I was able to get up. I felt pressure and wetness on my stomach, but I didn't wanna look. I convinced myself it was a drill and ran up two flights of stairs and across campus to my Spanish teacher's class, my favorite teacher's classroom. From there, I was given aid and eventually ambulance to and airlifted from Central Park to Holy Cross Hospital. I was shot in the lower abdomen by a 45 caliber ghost gun. My best friend Dominic was shot as well, but he was killed. Dominic was just 14 and he was a bright, funny, crazy individual who should be alive right now. Another girl named Gracie was also murdered and two other individuals were injured. In eight seconds, two killed and three injured. Eight seconds to change hundreds of lives. If it wasn't for a ghost gun and the ghost gun loophole, I wouldn't have been asked to speak today because I would have just been a normal high school kid, not a victim of gun violence. I don't know why the shooter committed this act, but I do know that many of the current laws and regulation in place to prevent people like him from owning guns were circumvented by his or his family's purchase of a ghost gun. They represent a ridiculous loophole in the gun world. Guns purchased as easily assembled kits commonly found from online sites. 
They're untraceable by police, unserialized, and require no background checks. All you need is to enter your credit card information. This is not okay. Ghost guns need to be illegal. And that's why the work that Supervisor Stephanie and you all do is so important. I'm only 16 and I don't have the power to change laws like these. However, many of you do have the voice and the power to change this. The day I lost my childhood and my sense of safety and my best friend. Every student who attends any school should not be scared of losing their life due to gun violence. We're your friends, your students, your neighbors, your children, and your future. Thank you all and thank you to Supervisor Stephanie and everyone else speaking today for your advocacy. Thank you, Mia. Ruth, if you would like to unmute and speak now. Good morning. I'm Ruth Borenstein, a San Francisco resident, member of the leadership team of the San Francisco chapter of Brady United Against Gun Violence. I am very grateful to Supervisor Stephanie for spearheading this effort. And I wanna thank her and her staff, Chief Scott, my fellow gun violence prevention advocates here today. It is crucial that San Francisco take immediate action to address the threat of ghost guns, which are proliferating throughout our city, state, and country. Ghost guns are increasingly becoming the crime gun of choice for people who cannot lawfully buy firearms in California. Ghost guns are designed and marketed for the purpose of avoiding background checks, waiting periods, and other state law protections against gun violence. Because ghost guns lack serial numbers, they cannot be traced if used in a crime, and they cost far less than firearms produced by licensed manufacturers. As a result, any person with cash in hand, whether a domestic abuser, teenager, gun trafficker, or a person contemplating suicide, can purchase the components to easily build a working handgun or even an assault weapon. The components are often packaged together in kits containing everything needed to assemble a working firearm, including a jig and drill bits. All that is needed is a hand drill available at any hardware store. The completed DIY firearms look, feel, and function like any other gun, although without critical safety features required by California law. The rise of ghost guns presents a dangerous and deadly threat. The number of ghost guns recovered in California is increasing exponentially, including, as you have heard, in San Francisco. We have seen ghost guns used in mass shootings, school shootings, killings of law enforcement, community violence, and domestic violence. We must take a meaningful action on ghost guns. San Francisco's proposed ordinance is a huge step forward in combating the rise of ghost guns, and we expect it to be a model for communities throughout the Bay Area and California as a whole. Brady is proud to have partnered with Supervisor Stephanie to address this serious threat to the safety of San Franciscans. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Allison, would you like to unmute and speak now? Good morning. I'm Anderman, Senior Counsel for Giffords Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence, the gun violence prevention organization led by former Congresswoman and survivor Gabby Giffords. On behalf of Giffords Law Center, I'd like to thank Supervisor Stephanie for her leadership on gun violence prevention in San Francisco and in particular, her efforts to address the scourge of undetectable and untraceable firearms plaguing the city. I'd also like to thank Chief Scott and all the inquiries and survivors participating today. The use of undetectable, untraceable firearms in crimes, including in cities across the United States, especially in California, a state with exceptionally strong gun regulations, these guns are attractive to people who intend to use who cannot pass a background check. While California attempted to address this issue in years with legislation, data is clear that far too many people are failing to comply with state law. A DOJ rule announced on Friday will help this issue by requiring ghost gun kits to be purchased through a licensed gun dealer and subject to a background check, but it will still be several months before the rule goes into effect. A new California law that will be partly in effect in July 2022 will also likely address the situation, 
But similarly, there is a substantial period of time during which ghost guns will be allowed to proliferate in San Francisco. Local problems require local solutions, and Supervisor Stephanie has crafted a novel solution to this problem, one that will make San Francisco the first city in the state to regulate ghost guns at the local level and enable local prosecution of ghost gun offenders. This law is also stronger and more comprehensive than what will be in effect at the federal and state level, so it has the potential to make meaningful change in the city and county. So once again, thank you to Supervisor Stephanie, Chief Scott, and the gun violence prevention advocates who work together to make this day possible. Thank you, Allison, and thank you all for speaking to the importance of this issue in this bill. Now, I will open up the floor for questions. If any reporters are interested in asking a question, please use the raise hand function on the webinar and I will unmute you. And if you could please direct your question to a specific participant for ease. Um, I'm gonna unmute Michael Bott. Michael, if you could ask your question. Yeah, uh, good morning, everyone. This is for the uh, uh, supervisor, Chief Scott. Um, how do you define a ghost gun kit uh, with this legislation? You know, at what point does sort of a collection of gun parts become a ghost gun kit that would be illegal under this uh, proposal? Yes, thank you for the question. Um, the, the definition of a ghost gun is defined in the legislation, and it really has to do with 80% of the frame. Um, the 80% is the cutoff, so you have the frame, um, and then the rest of the parts are what can be easily assembled into that frame. And that, um, is, that is really what we're looking at when you get just the frame. It's an 80% cutoff, and then um, the parts are, like Ruth said with the drill, very easy to assemble. Got it. So it's pretty much the 80% frame or the 80% lower receiver that would be made illegal with this um, legislation. Unserialized, yes. Right, right. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, if anyone else wanted to answer, or I can unmute Abine uh, Clayton next. Abhinay, if you would like to go. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much um, for doing this. My question is um, also for Chief Scott. Um, I'm wondering if there's any, well, I guess this could also go to Supervisor Stephanie as well, but I'm wondering if there are any plans in terms of uh, implementation and enforcement and how that may jive with um, you know, equity and things that the police department has also been working towards. I understand that these guns are more often found in people's hands and in traffic stops. So I'm wondering how enforcing the ban would jive with uh, racial equity, honestly. Yeah, I'll uh, take the first stab at that. You know, the, we as we, the San Francisco Police Department, have spent a lot of time and resources to really address that the issue that you raised, equity, and how we approach reducing gun violence. We partnered with the California Partnerships for Safe Community. And a part of that partnership is a uh, analysis over the last three years of all of our homicides and over the last almost two years on our shootings. And what we have really been able to carve out of that analysis is identification of the people who are most at risk of either being a victim of gun violence or perpetrating gun violence. And really what the data bears out is there is uh, inequity in that. You know, 85% of the victims of gun violence in our city are either African American, Black, or Hispanic, Latinx, and the, you know that's where the data falls. So we want to be in front of this by really trying to do more to address some of what's causing the gun violence, like the networks of people who may be at the higher likelihood to retaliate. Uh, getting people to a position of stability through life coaching, and we've gotten grant funding for that and those type of things. 
so we don't have to rely on the criminal justice system of purely arresting and putting people in prison to address this issue. And I think that's how we're trying to approach it from an equity standpoint, because we believe that there's a lot more that, that can be done on the other side of that, the services side, once we identify people and families who are at most risk of being subject to, to gun violence. So that's part of what we're doing and that work is uh, evolving and it's going to take a team of people to do that. But let's make no mistake about it. There is the other side of this work. You know, when somebody does shoot somebody and injure or kill them, we have to do our jobs and we have to investigate those cases and bring those folks account to be held in account. So that that's still part of the work, but the equity is taken seriously and we've invested a lot of time and research into how to best address that. So I hope that answers your question. It does, thank you. And yeah, I would love to hear from Supervisor Stephanie as well if there's time. Yes, thank you. I would just like to add that um, it's really important to note that this ordinance targets vendors. So the vendors that are selling these um, ghost guns to people in San Francisco are the ones who are going to be prohibited from doing that. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's still um, important to raise issues of equity, of course, but I wanted to make sure that everyone realizes that this is banning the sale and the vendors cannot sell, sell these unserialized ghost gun kits to anyone in San Francisco. So uh, hopefully that helps um, add to the question, add to the answer. It does, I appreciate you both. Thank you. Great, uh, with that, I'll open up for Michael Barba. Michael, you should be unmuted. Yeah, hi there. This is Michael Barba from the San Francisco Examiner newspaper. Uh, this question is for the supervisor or for Allison. I was hoping one of you might be able to speak more specifically to the fine print of the legislation in terms of what it would do. And also, if you could talk about how this intersects with uh, proposed or current state law and how it's stronger than state law. Allison, do you wanna take a first stab at that? Sure, thank you. So currently state law requires anyone who is building a firearm from a kit to apply for a serial number and be subject to a background check. However, what we know from the data is that too few people are actually doing what's required, which is applying for the serial number um, and getting the background check. So they're buying the kit online and building a firearm and then it's untraceable um, and undetectable. And um, the recent rule uh, that was um, proposed by the DOJ that is not in effect because it's subject to a several month long comment and a, a review period. But that would essentially include in the definition of firearm 80% receivers, and that would require anyone who is purchasing one of those unfinished receivers to go through a licensed gun dealer, be subject to a background check, and all of the other um, regulations imposed on sales through dealers. But what this ordinance would do is actually ban the possession of these 80% receivers entirely. Um, so, you know, it's, it's stronger in that regard. And as the supervisor pointed out, banning the manufacturer and sale as well. Thank you. Okay, if there are any other questions, um, I'll open it up for another few seconds just because I know it can take a, take a little time. Um, I believe it looks like no one else has used the raise hand function. Of course, if there are any other follow-ups, um, let me know. We are obviously available um, and we look forward to sharing more on this leg legislation. Thank you all for joining and thank you to all of our participants.